Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you kind of the basics of getting started with iOS development using Swift 2 with Xcode 7. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing you're going to want to do is open up Xcode. So let's just go down. Not that. Of course, open up Xcode. Now in Xcode 7, there is get started with a playground, create new Xcode project, and check out existing project. So with the create new project, this is what we're going to be playing with today. But getting started with the playground, this is where you can test out some of your algorithms and other things and functions to see if your application will work properly. And it's going to do that with graphs and other things. But right now, we're just going to do create a new Xcode project. All right, so first thing you're greeted with is the presets. So you can preset it to a master detail application, a page-based application, a single view application, which is what I use mostly, and then a tabbed application, which of course has tabs at the bottom. Now, if you're doing a game, this is a whole new ballpark pretty much because the language is Swift but the game technology is different so we use scenes and other things so if you were doing sprite kit or scene kit or open GLES and metal then you are using different components to actually program your application now if we were to head back and then over here in your left bar right here you have your frameworks and libraries if you're just getting into Xcode, I would not play around with frameworks or anything. You can, of course, look into that later on, but this is just a beginner's guide. So in this, you have also the watchOS, so then you can create an iOS app specifically for WatchKit, because now WatchKit supports standalone WatchKit apps. And then down beneath, you have OS X. So in OS X, you have your Cocoa application, your game, and your command line tool. Now your Cocoa application, this is where you would program pretty much any normal app on the Mac. A game, of course, is specifically designed towards games. And a command line tool, this creates a command line tool. If you don't know what that is, basically it's a terminal, and it controls your computer and other things. Then we have our frameworks and libraries. Again, I wouldn't play around with those too much if you're just beginning, so search into that later. Now let's head up here to iOS. I will be showing you how to do an iOS app application. So over here we go to single view application, click next. Over here you will have the choice to create your product name. So your product name, I'm just going to call this my test application. Your organization name, this is of course my company name. So the company name is Architap and the organization identifier is Architap as well. Now as you can see this changes your bundle identifier. Now your bundle identifier is very important when you're uploading your application. So you want to make sure that you get it to the way you want it. Then your language, you can of course set this to Swift or Objective-C, of course I will be using Swift. Devices will be universal, of course you can specifically design for the iPhone and iPad. Now let's go ahead and create. Now when your application loads up, you're essentially greeted with your project page. So your project page carries the bundle identifier, the version number, the build number, what team you're working on, and this of course is hooking up your account to itunesconnect.com. And then down here you have your deployment target. I'm going to deploy mine to iOS 9.0. Now the devices will be universal. You can of course switch that around. Main interface, now this is going to be, okay, which interface do I want to use? Right now they automatically set you up with the main.storyboard, which is typically how, if you're beginning especially, how you want it to be. Then we go down here, you can have a device orientation, portrait upside down, landscape left, and landscape right and you can toggle these on and off to your liking. Our status bar style, you can make it a light or you can just make it the default black. And you can also say hide the status bar and require full screen. App icons and launch images, these are all hosted right inside of your assets.xc assets. So when you're uploading your app icon, this is where you would have all of your app icon images. Head back, and then all this other stuff up here, you really don't want to play around with this if you're just beginning especially. But right here is the main thing you would play around with, your build phases. Now inside of your build phases, you have your compile sources, so these will be the viewcontroller.swift. These are your files that you're trying to compile. Link binary with libraries, now these essentially are the framework. So if you create your own framework, that is how you, that would be done. But they already have a bunch of frameworks created for you. So you, they have ad support, audio toolbox, AV foundation. I'm not going to go through all of these, but either way, these are where your frameworks are stored. Now if you go into your appdelegates.swift, I typically don't play around with this, especially when I was just starting out with application development. So just leave this alone, pretty much. Then we can go down here to our viewcontroller.swift. So this viewcontroller.swift, if you head into your main.storyboard, you can see that you have this view controller right here. Now this view controller, because if you head over to the identity inspector right over here, you can see that it's of the class of a view controller. So if we head over to the viewcontroller.swift right now, you can see that the 
class is called view controller. So essentially everything that we put on here edits this view controller. Now if we wanted to add another view controller, we can just click and drag that view controller onto our scene like so. And now we have this other view controller. Now right now it doesn't have a class applied to it, so let's go ahead and say file, new, file. And now we can add a class onto this view controller. And right here you just have your Swift file, so just click on that, click next, and create your Swift file. So this will be my second view controller, create. And now as you can see, my second viewcontroller.swift was set up, but there's really nothing in it right now. So if we head over to our viewcontroller.swift, we can just copy and paste everything that we see there right into our project. And then just change the class name. So I will call this my second view controller. And then this will be of the super class of a UI view controller. Now, if you head over to the main.storyboard, you have a you have quite a few options for what kind of controllers you want. So if you have a table view controller onto your scene, you would go over here to your second VC. And if you want to edit a table view, you need to say UI table view right up here. And that means that we are now editing a UI table view controller, like so. But we are only dealing with UI view controllers, so let's keep with that. Now let's head over to our main.storyboard again, and if we head over to our second view controller that we created, we can head over to the identity inspector right up here, go to our class, and this we can just now put in our class name as second view controller. And now anything that we put inside of the second vc.swift will automatically be editing this view controller. So if I wanted to add a label, you can create the label programmatically and whatnot, but I'm going to click and drag this label onto my scene like so, and that just allows me to have this label on my scene. Now with this label, you can see that if we head over to our attributes inspector, you can change the text of your label over here, and then click enter, that changes the text. You can change the color of your label, so we can change it to any color you want really or you can also change the font. So you just click on this little T, you can change the font to whatever you want. And then you can change the style of it to regular, medium, whatnot. And the size of it, you can always click these up arrows or just type in your own number. Now there are a lot of other things you can do with this label, but I'm not gonna go through all of them. But you can go down here to your background right here, and you can just add a background color if you want to. Uh, otherwise, you can always just keep it as none. And also with this label, you can go up here to your alignment and you can align it to the left, center it, or to the right. So I'm gonna keep it centered. And right now, you can see that this view controller, it looks centered in the view controller. But if I were to build and run this right now, you will see that it's actually going to be off to the right. As you can see, it's off to the right. Now, the reason is this. It's resizing according to the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6S, and whatnot. So you can essentially think of this as your top left corner of your iPhone, and it builds out through there. So essentially this right here will be the size of your iPhone 6S. Now if you wanna get this label centered, what you need to do is you need to work with constraints. Now if you right click or control click and drag from this label right here over to our view, you can see there's a lot of options to how you can constrain your label. So you can say make it have equal widths, or you can say center vertically, center horizontally. And also a tip and a trick with this is you can hold shift and you can select multiple things at once and then click enter and that will apply the constraints or you can just click one and done. But let's say I just want this label to be right there but I want it to be centered on, the si on my screen. So I'm gonna go right over here and I'm just gonna say center horizontally. Click enter and now that's going to center it within the middle of my scene. Now as you can see there is this red line around my label. That means our constraints are not working properly. So we can right click or control click and drag from our label over to our view and right over here we can say vertical spacing to top layout guide and that should fix that label problem. Now another problem that you can see is this orange line and you can see that this little dashed line right here is saying the label size is not going to be built properly. So if you want the label size to be perfect you can right click and control click and drag from your label to the label and you can say set the width to the width that I said. And then you can also do this for the height and set the height to what I said. And now all the lines are gone. So if we were to build and run this right now, you can see that this is going to be centered at the top of the screen like I wanted. Now another thing I want to do is add a button. So I'm going to take this button onto my scene. I'm going to just quickly add some constraints over to my view, center vertically, center horizontally. And now with this button, what I want it to do is change the text of this label. So I'm going to go over here to my assistant editor. Now if we were to right click or control click and drag from this button over to our viewcontroller.swift, you can 
see that there's certain options you can do. So the connection type we can say is an outlet, which basically just names our button so we can edit it later, or we can have an action. Now with this action, the name of this button, I'm just going to call this my BTN. And this is going to be my BTN action. Now if we head down here, we can say the event will be touch up inside, although you can change this to whatever you want. Touch up inside basically means you touched it, you let go, and then you want the action to happen. And this is the typical way of using buttons. So I'm going to connect this, and then right inside of this, I wanted to edit this label. So I'm going to right click or control click and drag from this label over to my view controller.swift. And the name of this label, I'm just gonna call this my green label, although you can call this whatever you want. Now, if we head into the function for our button action, we can say green label dot text, and we're going to set this equal to hello world, like so. So now if we were to build and run this, we can actually just see that when we click this button, it's going to change that label. So let's head over here and we can see this button, click on the button, and it's going to change that to hello world. Now I didn't really go into the button too much, so let's actually hide the assistant editor, click on the button, and over here you can see that there's certain editing options in your attributes inspector. So right over here you have the type, so you can do an info light, and info dark, or you can do a complete custom button, but I'm just gonna keep it at system. Our state configuration, you can make this highlighted as its state configuration, or you can just set it to the default, which is the way that I want it to be. Now with this button, you can change the title to whatever you want just by going over here to change the button title. Then you can also go down here to your text color, change that to whatever you want. Shadow color, you can of course change this to whatever you want. I'm not gonna do anything with that. And then you can have an image in your button if you want to. So you just place an image inside of this. It would normally come down in a drop down button, but I don't have any images right now. So then you would add an image or you can add a background image if you want. And you can also go down here and add a background color if you want. So I'm gonna make mine a blue color if you want. Now let's say I wanna add another button that changes over to the second view controller. So let's go ahead and add a button onto our scene and this will be my second button. So I'm just gonna type that in second button you can of course this is just a title this is just a title for me to know which button is which now i'm going to right click or control click and drag from this button over to my view i'm going to say center horizontally so that it's centered in the middle of my scene but as you can see there's some red but i don't want it centered vertically so i'm going to right click or control click and drag from this button over to this button right up here and i'm going to add some vertical spacing and now as you can see that's going to keep it spaced between this button and this button and now we can right click or control click and drag from this button and we want it to move over to our second view controller so right click, control click and drag, and we can say show. So now if I were to build and run this, you can see that I can click on this bottom button right here and it's gonna move over to my second view controller. Now the second view controller right here, I don't have anything attributed to the second view controller. So let's head over to our second vc.swift and right in here, I'm just going to say self.view.backgroundcolor and I'm gonna make this equal to a UI color dot and you can make it a dot red color or you can also go back here you can say open parentheses and add an rgb value a hue or whatnot i'm going to just make it simple and say dot red color and now if we were to build and run this we can click on this second button and it's going to move over to my second view controller now along with changing your background color and whatnot, you can actually change certain elements of these buttons that you've created. So if we head over to our viewcontroller.swift, I can go down here and when I want this button action to be called, I can go down here and say green label dot text color. And I'm gonna make this equal to a UI color dot black color, like so. So if we were to build and run this, we can actually, when we click this button, it's going to change the green label to the text and the color. Now right now I have all of this stuff stored inside of my button action, but let's say I wanna call this from certain other buttons, but that's gonna be a little bit cluttered. So let's go down here and I'm just going to create a function. And this function, it's essentially what we do up here with the button action and all, but it, we can go to up here to our function, we can say action, so this is just going to be the name of it, then open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket. And inside of this, I'm just going to take this stuff up here and I'm going to paste that right inside of my action. Now I'm going to go up here to my button action, I'm gonna delete that, and now I can go in here and I'm going to just say action. So now when this button is pressed, I'm going to call that function down there. So if we were to build and run this, you can see that I click this button right up here and it changes the text accordingly because it has called this action. 
Now along with all these elements that are inside of our application, we can also create variables. Now with these variables, one thing you need to keep in mind is that there are let variables, which are unchanging variables. So we can say let, so we can go in here and we can say let health equal, and we're gonna make this equal 100. That means we want this health value to never be changed from 100. And down here we can say variable, so this means that we want it to change. So we can say var health will be equal to 100. And now this is expecting it to change. Now let's say I wanna change this health value. So let's go down here to our action, and I'm just going to say health. And right after this health, you can say minus minus or plus plus. These are quick and short ways to go plus one and minus one. So the minus minus will of course minus one and plus plus will plus one. Or you can also say plus equals and then one. So this will make it add one every time as well. Or you can just make the health equal zero if you want. But I'm gonna keep it at plus equals one. And then right down here, let's say we wanna add this to a different label. So let's head over to our main.storyboard. Let's click and drag a label onto our scene. I'm going to set up the constraints real quick. This is going to be centered horizontally. Then I'm going to add some vertical spacing. Now with this label, I wanna connect it up to my viewcontroller.swift. So let's head over to our assistant editor. I'm going to click and right click or control click and drag from this label over to my scene. This will be an outlet, of course. And right inside of this, I'm just going to call mine my health label. You can of course call this whatever you want. Now let's go down here to our action and let's say every time the health changes we want our health label to equal health. So let's say health label dot text open quotation mark close quotation mark and inside of this you want to go slash open parentheses, close parentheses, and inside of this you can put variables. So this is going to change your health variable into something that's readable as text. So now if we were to build and run this, and you can see if I click this button right up here, it's going to change the variable up here, and, all, and it's always going to change my health as well. Now, as a beginner, these are pretty much the essential things that you're going to be using as Swift. Now, in here, inside of your view did load, we have never discussed exactly what this does, but this is essentially when your view loads, you want certain variables, variables to be different. So let's say I want this green thing to be a red color automatically. So I can go over here, I'm gonna say green label dot text color will be equal to, and we're gonna make this equal to a UI color dot red color. So now if I were to build and run this, it's going to automatically change that green label to a red color, like so. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.